another video from Riftboard. Uh, today let's talk about the Fly Surfer Peak 5. I'm here at the Tonsboden, uh, that's mountain at the end of Lake Zurich. Um, actually through the trees there's Lake Zurich and as you can see there is some sun coming through the clouds but here I'm completely in the fog. But uh, yeah, it's cool. So um, yeah, the new Peak 5. I'm flying it on a Esca shape snow kite bar. And uh, I really have to say, good job Fly Surfer. I flew the old one a few days ago. Uh, the old one is the V4. And you really feel that the V5 has a little bit more power in the loop. So. That really helps in the slow wind conditions, like today. Uh, my kite just lying there. There's absolutely not much wind, but the kite has much more power in the turn, so it's easier to climb up in uh, low wind conditions. And as well, through a little bit more power, you have a little bit more lift. Uh, you feel that uh, when you are flying, and yeah, the kite has a little bit less of this uh, flappiness so it it still flatters in the turn but uh, it has some um, some stubby loss from the leading edge to the trailing edge so uh, that really helps to minimize the, the, f the flappy <laughs> flappiness of the kite. I don't know the English word but um, you really have less uh, yeah, the bar is less shaking and uh, when you're flying, I, I can show you in an old video, you really feel the bar is always going like this and uh, now it's super solid and I think the kite has a little bit more uh, feedback than the old one. Um, I fly the kite with a little bit of uh, uh, oversheet and the old one, yeah, it's it was hard to find the the sweet spot between uh, speed of the kite during the turn, so you have power and uh, still pull the bar as much that it's not uh, flapping. And your new one is uh, really easy; just turn and you will go. But uh, if you have an old one and it's still in good shape, um, you can easy use it. But if you are looking for a new cool free rack kite then go for the peak v5 um, i really recommend this kite to beginners it's so easy um, i flew the 8 in super light wind and i had a little bit of front stall when it's at the zenith then uh, you feel that the leading edge with all this stabilos inside uh, it's it's a little bit heavier and then it uh, front stalls but now on the 11 meter I didn't have the problem yet and uh, yeah it's great for expeditions for uh, flying I did some kite loops a uh, nice loop uh, and yeah if you have a big frozen lake I'll go for a, a sonic or a, um, a sole just because uh, yeah, the, the peak is not the best kite going upwind and when you are overpowered the kite comes really deep in the wind window and then it's hard to, to stay on the edge and uh, let the kite 
applied to the wind window. But all in all, I love the kite. So, let's go for a session. And here we go! As you can see, definitely not much wind, but it's still enough to go up here. And I think with the old one, I had more problems climbing up here. And even through the trees, it's really tricky. You really feel that, or really appreciate that uh, direct and crispy feel of the kite. So when you pull the bar, the kite turns at the same time. So super easy to control. And it gives you a lot of a uh, yeah, feeling of safety. kite is flapping a little bit but you really don't feel it here at the bar and this is the lightest bar you can get on the market so or one of the lightest so when you feel the shake of the flappiness of the kite then you feel it on this bar but you really don't feel it so super nice So you might wondering what uh, sizes of kite I use. So uh, I have the 5 meter peak, the 8 meter peak and the 11 meter. And I choose the 11 instead of the 30 meter because I flew the old, the V4 in 30 meter and the turning was so slow. So yeah, I was not sure if it, uh, if it really has more power through the loops and to, through to the bigger turn it's uh, trickier to loop uphill and this kite is easier. So here we are in the wind 